All right, welcome back. Um, in this video, you guys may not like me. Um, I'm gonna show you one more thing before we do an example. Um, I know you guys are dying for an example, um, but you know we gotta get through some of this business first. So um, when we do stiffness, uh, stiffness method problems, there's, a, there's uh, three equations we use, okay, um, to solve for um, our, so if, we're, we, if we have an indeterminate structure, right, indeterminate structure, and we have, you know, all these funny loads acting on this structure, there's three equations we use to figure out um, what the reactions are at each of these uh, joints, right, because the whole purpose of um, solving or all of these methods we've been covering are to solve reactions for indeterminate structures so we can later go and make you know shear moment diagrams and and design certain types of beams frames columns etc uh, the first equation we use is called uh, the unrestrained unrestrained deformation def formation equation okay and this equation says that the deformations of the unrestrained uh, unrestrained degrees of freedom is equal to the s sub uu or the structural stiffness matrix for unrestrained um, row column um, inverse so s sub uu inverse uh, times the column vector JLU, which is all the joint loads happening at the unrestrained um, degrees of freedom. So, say if we had a, a beam here and it was fixed here, uh, there's a roller here. Um, actually, let's just let's just do that. Let's just have a, a fixed end here and a roller here, right? Uh, notice that this has six degrees of freedoms. It's rotational, rotational vertical, vertical, uh, horizontal, horizontal, right? Unrestrained deformation. So all the deformations happening at the unrestrained degrees of freedom, meaning um, every time we see an unrestrained degree of freedom, right, not a restrained, um, this equation will give us the deformation in hap or the deformation happening at that degree of freedom. So for, for this rotational right here, this number one, uh, we can't use this equation because uh, this is a restrained degree of freedom, right? This fixed end supports a moment. That means this can't move or this can't rotate. Um, and again, this this horizontal and this vertical, they can't move either because this is a fixed end, right? Fixed ends support a moment, a vertical reaction, and a horizontal reaction. But here, we only have one restraint, which is this, this bottom guy here. Uh, rollers can support a vertical up and down reaction, but they can't support a horizontal or a moment. And so that means we do the unrestrained. So the unrestrained uh, degrees of freedoms is this rotational and this uh, horizontal ones. Um, and this equation gives us the deformationing or deformations happening at uh, the unrestrained degrees of freedoms. Um, this makes sense because if we had a, a delta r equation, well you can kind of see that there's no such thing because are there different, well, in just the fundamentals of structural analysis in your typical, you know, college course, are there any deformation, deformation, oh my God, I can't speak today. Are there any deformations um, happening at restrained degrees of freedom? In other words, is there a rotation here? No, because this is a restrained reaction, right? This can't move. Is there a deformation happening here? No, because this is a fixed end. This can't move horizontally. Is there one happening here? No, it can't move vertically, right? Only way, it, the only degrees of freedoms that can move in this scenario are this rotational one here and this horizontal one here. So really, there's never a such thing as a restrained deformation equation because they're restrained, right? There's no deformations happening there. The second equation we use is the R sub R. 
uh, equation. That's equal to S sub RU uh, times delta U minus JL restrained. Okay, so RR stands for the reactions happening at the restrained degrees of freedom. In other words, everything everything here that we said couldn't deform, it has a reaction. Um, that's what the little r stands for, restrained reactions, is equal to the S sub RU matrix, which we'll get to a little bit later on in an example, times the deforma deformations happening at the unrestrained degrees of freedom. This, so whatever we solve for this, this is actually the same thing we plug in here minus the joint load restraint. So all the joint loads happening at the restrained degrees of freedoms, we have a column vector for that. And finally, equation number three, uh, we have M sub I is equal to K sub I uh, times delta I plus fixed M or FM um, I okay. M um, stands for well. In, in in the way I do this process, M I just say it's a member. So if we had a, a fixed end here, a support here, a support here, right? Um, we have element one here, which is between these two joints, and we have element two here. So this I stands for each of these elements. So we can do an equation for element one and then an equation for element two. Um, this equation really gives us our internal reactions happening at each of these elements, elements one and two, each of the internal reactions. So this element one, if we, you know, if we cut it, if we cut it here, close to the joint and here, we have, uh, you know, you may have a moment here, you may have vertical reactions, you may have horizontal reactions, okay? Equation number three is what's going to give us that information. Ki is your stiffness matrix for element, for whatever element I. Um, delta sub I is your deformations happening at element I, whichever element I. Uh, remember, or just remember that delta I is not the same as delta sub U. Delta I is actually extracted information we get from delta sub U. Um, and again, uh, once we do an example, it'll make a lot more sense. Um, and then finally, you add to this is a, a fixed M or FM, which stands for fixed moment. Um, but really, FM is um, what's going on. Well, FM is um, if we take an element and we treat it as a so say we took element one, we treated it as a fixed, uh, fixed end, fixed end on both sides, right? Um, FM would stand for uh, what's going on at each of these supports. So we can write the reactions happening at each of these supports in a column vector form, and that gives us FMI. Um, I think that's about it. Uh, so these three equations we uh, need to know uh, when we do a stiffness method example. So in the next video, we're going to start a very, very long stiffness method example. And the reason it's going to be very long is because I want to uh, step through the process um, very carefully, very slowly to make sure we all understand what's going on, how we use these three equations, how we use the um, stiffness matrix, how we use the structural stiffness matrix, um, and a bunch of other things. All right, so see you in those videos. And uh, also make sure to grab some coffee because it's going to be very, very long. All right, so see you then.